Hey, it's Dan Phoenix here. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about why I actually quit gaming completely 10 years ago. And this wasn't something that I even imagined that I would give up, never even come into my head this thought whatsoever, but it was something that just naturally happened, which is a really good thing. And the reason why I'm making this video and talking about a specific topic is because we have so many young people in the world that have a serious gaming addiction that is affecting their mental health and their cognitive functions and just their whole human experience as a whole. And I can tell you now, pretty much none of them are aware that this is going on. So I wanna give you a bit of a backstory. So I started gaming around the age of five years old, was playing consoles such as the NES and SNES, and then later on it was seeing such as the N64, Dreamcast, PlayStation 1, Xbox, and then when the high-speed internet came around, gaming online with different MMORPGs. And leading up to about the age of 10 years old, I did game quite often, but it wasn't as bad as it got after the age of nine years old. So I got heavily into so many different shoot 'em up games and I just couldn't get enough of them. And it got really, really bad down the line. It got to the point where I got into a game known as World of Warcraft. And this is a game that has no end. It's an MMORPG, which you play online. You can have many different characters such as Paladin, Mages, Priests, and Rogues, and so many other different characters. And you can collect all these different things and you've got different dungeons and levels and it's just like non-stop and they're always making expansions for the game. So it's just continual. You just keep going and going and going and going. And when I got into this game, I never wanted to get off it. I just completely stopped doing everything else in my life. I stopped socializing with all my friends completely and I was just solely focused on this game. It literally became my world i was so submersed within this game that everything else i just didn't care about whatsoever when i'd actually go and have to eat food i'd eat as quickly as possible so i could get back to gaming it was really bad so i would literally game every hour that i possibly could around the clock wake up the next day and do it again and again and again then you could actually type in on the world of warcraft when you're playing it some sort of command and it actually tell you your total play time and I had about a year of total playtime. That is absolutely crazy. I had a lot of characters that were the highest level possible, which takes a very, very long time. I had just collected so many different things on there and there was just no end to me, just continuing on. When I'd get bored of a certain character, I'd create another one, start with them from the beginning. It was just like going, 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 going. And looking back on this from what I know now is I ended up with a serious dopamine addiction. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that all of us humans produce naturally. And when you are gaming, guess what happens? You're getting lots of dopamine. And when you reach a certain goal, say you wanna reach a certain level with a character, or you beat a certain dungeon or a certain boss, or you acquire a certain item that you want, it gives you a huge surge of dopamine, which is your reward circuitry system. So the people that create these games are very, very clever. By you getting these dopamine rushes all the time, it just makes you want to continue gaming more and more and more and more and more. And what happens is after you get a surge of dopamine, after a while it diminishes and then you want something new and different. You wanna obtain a different goal within that game. So you have this never ending vicious cycle where you are just pursuing instant gratification. And then what it's actually doing to you in your everyday life is what goes up must come down. So if you then go about in your life and you've been playing World of Warcraft for ages and you don't play it for a while, your dopamine levels are gonna go down massively and everything else is just gonna seem very boring in life, like very, very boring. Food could f seem boring, hanging out with your friends could seem boring and various other day-to-day -day things that a lot of people actually get natural enjoyment from. But because they don't give you nowhere near as much dopamine as it does when you're playing a game such as World of Warcraft, which I was doing, then everything else is just like, eh, this is boring. This is not giving me loads of dopamine. I don't want to do this. So I want to go back to gaming. So you just keep wanting to go back to it time and time and time again. It is literally working on your brain in the same way that cigarettes do, certain things people take 
to enhance their state, even gambling or watching certain women with no clothes online in videos and so many other things as well. This is not a good thing whatsoever because especially when you are a young person developing, it is turning you into a dopamine addict. And then that addiction later in life can turn into other addictions that can be way more serious and detrimental if you do not become aware of what is going on and get it under control and work on this issue. So yeah, this just carried on with World of Warcraft. Then I actually got to the point at the age of 23 years old where I just gave it up completely. I didn't think about quitting it whatsoever, but for about the past six months leading up to me quitting, I actually hung out with some people because I felt a natural desire to actually start going outside in the real world and doing things. And I got offered something that was a mind altering thing that can make you see things in a very different way. It can enhance your consciousness. You can come to a lot of self realizations and so on. And after I took this and had a major massive enlightening positive experience where it just made me just see this whole outside world that I've just been shut away from for so long. I just got to the point from that experience where I was just like, I just wanna be outside and play and have fun and actually experience life to the fullest and be with friends and go to new places and do new things and do new exciting things as well. So after I had that experience, I just naturally started to go in the process where I just did not want to game in any way, shape or form. The other things just seemed way more appealing to me. So I just naturally did that. And I just didn't think about gaming whatsoever because I was enjoying everything else just way, way more. Because if I look back on it, why did I get a gaming addiction? Well, one, my parents from a young age and other people just allowed me to play games and they weren't aware of why it's not a good thing. But also, my family life was not very good. There's a lot of ups and downs. There was many times for years and years and years that I was depressed. I wasn't necessarily happy with myself and my life and what was going on in my whole human experience. So it had pretty much become a crutch and something to switch off from the outside reality because I had a lot of internal pain going on for me. But obviously you're not addressing the root cause of the issue. Using something that is a dopamine addiction such as gaming, it's just a recipe for disaster. Sometimes you've got to face things that are going on that you're not happy about and start to change them. So it seemed once I had this really profound experience go on, I started to actually have more of a life that I truly desired, which I hadn't had that going on for many years in my life. And the world of gaming is just way worse than when I used to game. Because when I used to game, there wasn't smartphones everywhere. They didn't exist for a lot of my gaming years. So there's a lot of people that play games at home, but then when they're in a the car and traveling and out and about, even with friends at restaurants or a park or doing something else, as you will see, as you know, from going out in the Western world and out and about, so many people are gaming all the time. Like when I go to the gym, there's people that are on cardio machines that are just gaming the whole time. They're being a dopamine addict as they're meant to be doing something that's really, really good for them. And man, I'm telling you, if I had this when I was younger, like, oh, I would have literally never stopped gaming whatsoever. I've never had a break from it in any way, shape or form. And then there's the whole thing. I'll make a great example with one of my younger siblings. She is massively into gaming, but we have YouTube, which you're watching me on this platform now. And there is many big YouTube influencers that have massive, massive channels such as PewDiePie that has over 100 million subscribers that has built his channel on gaming. So he actually records himself gaming and then people like my younger sibling watches them. So she's gaming and she also watches people game as well. So you have this whole new world that never existed with gaming when I used to game. And it is just like making people the most biggest dopamine addicts with the young people more specifically. And I know if I had been around now, when I used to be into gaming, I'd have been like, wow, they're making really, really good money from it. Because people like PewDiePie and other big gaming YouTube channels such as Ninja, which there is so many out there now, they make so much money. So for someone like myself, if I'd done that and built a successful YouTube channel that was with gaming, 
And then I'm getting a lot of attention and a lot of people loving me and just saying loads of nice things, which obviously you also get negative feedback as well. And then I'm making a lot of money at the time from it consistently so I can have whatever I want and do whatever I want at such a young age, the likelihood of me just getting fully sucked into that world and never wanting to get out of it would have been very, very highly likely. Because when you're combining gaming with all those things, it's like you're just getting way, way, way more dopamine. So why would you want to give something up that's giving you so much dopamine, you're getting so much money and all those other benefits as well. Just the majority of people will never get to a point where they wake up and go, hmm, actually this is not a good thing and I need to switch up things. So people need to be very careful. And a lot of people could blame the parents, but at the end of the day, children are gonna do what they want to do. You can try and control them as much as you can, but if they go to friends where they're gaming, then they will game as well. And if they've got a phone, which most young children do now, they're gonna be gaming. So you can do your best as a parent and educate your children on why it's not the best thing for them, but in most circumstances, there's not much you could do about it. And if my parents told me to stop gaming, I would have absolutely freaked out because I was such an addict. And when you take the addictive thing away from the person, it's just like they just become so hard to be around. They're emotional and they could like scream at you and shout at you and just, to, yeah, just be an absolute nightmare to be around. And I have seen this with certain people that I've been with that have had children that have been addicts to iPads and watching things on YouTube or gaming. When you take it away from them, they're just like, oh my God, they're the worst to be around. And then a lot of parents are just like, oh, I haven't got a lot of time. And when I take them off of it, they're just so moody. So what I can do instead is give them a artificial babysitter that gives them a dopamine addiction and makes them shut up. And then I can get on with my life and do what I want to do. Again, it's another very vicious cycle and most parents are not aware of this. So you can obviously try and do a lot of things to educate yourself as a parent if you have children and just be as conscious as you can be around your child and the amount that they are gaming. And what I wanna say is not all bad because I learn a lot of transferable skills from gaming. So when you're gaming for such a long period of time, you have to be a very, very good at sustaining a long time with focusing and being present on one specific thing. And then it allowed me to actually improve my cognitive functions such as memory skills and be more alert and many other cognitive functions as well. And a really brilliant lesson that it learned me was, okay, you wanna to work towards something, you keep trying, 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 and many times that you'd fail and you have to try again and again and again, and in the end you would succeed. And that is how I am in my everyday life after gaming. And that's why for the last 10 years after gaming, I've managed to create the life of my dreams. I get to live in the country of my dreams, which is Thailand. I have my dream girlfriend. I have the most amazing friends. I have optimal health with no health issues whatsoever. I get to live my life of my dreams and do whatever I want, buy whatever I want. And if I had not given up the gaming, there's no way I would have been able to create all of these things so I can have the most best human experience that I've ever had in my whole existence, which I deserve and everyone deserves that, whether you are aware of that or not. And a couple last things I'll mention is if I actually visualize playing World of Warcraft, which I've done at some times, the draw to playing it is just like so big. The desire for it's just like, wow, because obviously I played it for so long and I got so much dopamine from it. So the natural desire to go back to it when I think about it, I get to feel those feelings again. But it's like, no, I'm not gonna go back to playing World of Warcraft or any games because I know once I start, I will not want to stop and it doesn't benefit my life in any positive way whatsoever because even if I played it a little bit I'd be like oh I got some dopamine from it and then when I'm off it I'm like oh I want to play it again and then I play it again and again and what will happen is a lot of things I've created in my life will start to fall to the wayside and it will start to push me more in a direction of going closer to what I don't want in my life and further away from the things that I do want within my life and the last thing I want to mention is we live in a world now where a lot of people are starting to actually be inside the game, which is one of the most dopamine stimulating things possible. So you put on this mask like thing and you're actually inside the game. I actually tried one of these briefly in a shop a few years ago when I was buying a phone and I had the phone attached to it. 
and I put it on for a few seconds and it was like, whoa, I am completely switched off from the outside world. World of Warcraft is doing that, but I'm still aware that I'm in this physical reality, but it made me completely detach from the physical reality. And yes, a lot of people don't have access to this type of gaming yet, but it's becoming more readily available. And that is going to make people the biggest gaming dopamine addicts possible. Because imagine you've got a life where you're not happy with it, it's not very fulfilling. And you go in here and you can switch off to everything that's going on in your human experience, especially if your child and your family home is not good and you're not liking school and so on. It's just like you are going to want to stay in that as much as you can. And I'm pretty sure down the line, maybe this even exists now, where you can actually create your own character, be in a real life version of this world and actually do everything that you want to do that you haven't created within this life because it'd be way easier to do it in a game than it would be for you to do it in real life, even though it's possible to do it in real life. But most people will never do the things consistently and be as disciplined as they possibly can to create more of what they want within their life. So that's it from me and this video. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. So as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.